Very pleased to be joined now by Angela Hill, who's competing at UFC 265 against Tisha Torres. Just sorting out the frame. You know, the frame has to be right. <laughs> That's good to see. Yeah. How's it going? Good, good. I'm, I'm doing well. I'm excited. I'm feeling ready and, you know, um, just happy to be here. You're looking absolutely shredded. Uh, you usually <laughs> are, to be fair. Have you done anything yeah. different? Like you seem to be buzzing in all your photos, like you look extra shredded and, and kind of extra glowing and buzzing. Do, do you feel any different or is that just, you know, is that just generally your positive mindset and, and training hard? Um, I, I don't know. Like I, I was just saying to uh, my poor husband, he had to deal with me this morning we woke up early to catch our flight. And I was just saying to him, like, man, I feel I haven't been this pumped in a fight for a while. And I think I was I was pretty pumped for the Rebus fight. Um, but the fact that it got pulled away, maybe maybe it just maybe a little more excited about coming in, showing up and being able to fight someone who's also like still going to give me the same things that I would have gotten with a win over Rebus. And I felt like Tisha poses almost less threats for me on the ground with her takedowns um, than Rebus did. So I'm uh, I'm just really excited to get this win back as well. It's a it's a rematch that I've wanted for for a few years now, and I wasn't sure if I ever was gonna get it. So I'm really excited for all those things, just being able to fight, um, feeling like this fight's actually gonna happen. Um, and and being able to right or wrong from way back when I was just starting out. Yeah, six years is a long time. Uh, how do you, how do you think you've changed most since then? Um, I'm I'm just a more complete fighter. I'm I'm more mature. I I see these girls who are coming in Tinder series or girls who come in um, off of tough. And I'm like, man, like that's how green I used to look, you know? And I didn't realize it at the time. I thought I was the best in the world, but I was so green back then. So now being more of a veteran, having almost more experience than most of the girls in my weight class, most of the women in my weight class in the UFC, um, it, it gives me a bit of confidence going in. I feel, I feel a little more in control of my destiny and in control of the chaos that goes on in the cage. So I think that's probably the biggest change. I feel like you're kind of an OG in the division. You've been around for a long time and, and now you, yeah. you, know, you keep getting rematches. How do you feel about rematches in general? Is it, is it a different mentality or is it because it's been so long? Is it, you know, does it still feel fresh in a way? Um, I think I think with the Yoder fight, I was a, a lot more nervous uh, just because I had already beaten her. And it is a little scary to go back to someone who you feel like, oh, I already I already got that notch in my belt and just go back and be like, oh, what if she what if she pulls off some crazy shit and gets like knocks me out or submits me or, you know, just is able to win you know what if she's just able to win so I was a little more nervous going into that fight even though I had um a ton of confidence going into it as well um but it's funny how like confidence and nerves don't necessarily count cancel each other out so uh going into this fight it's a little different you know I have something to prove I, I I'm confident but I'm, I'm also eager for it to happen instead of kind of maybe dreading it a little bit and I feel like Tisha might be there where she's she's dreading this matchup she didn't want to make it again when I got COVID in December and uh and they tried to rebook the fight a few months later she turned it down so to me that tells me hey she was dreading this fight and she already has a win over you so why risk me coming back and getting a win back getting canceling that out so um so yeah I I like I like rematching people who I feel like I've gotten way better um way who them I, I really like rematching people like that I feel like I would rematch just about well yeah anyone that I've lost to I would rematch them in a hot heartbeat especially the last two you know? Where, where I went back and I focused on where I could do better, where I could attack more, where I could like take it out of the judge's hands. And I feel like I've improved so much as a fighter after those last two losses last year against uh, Gadelia and Watterson. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's a, uh, I like rematches against people I lost to. I don't mind the ones against people I won against, um, but it is a little more nerve wracking. 
Do you feel like things are going your way a little bit getting a judge's decision? Because you could say you're pretty unlucky <laughs> against Claudia, right? You're on a couple of those splits that you just mentioned. Does it now feel like kind of momentum's going your way again? Um, I mean, I, I haven't really tested it out yet. I feel like um, the Yoder fight was I pretty much blew her out the water. So there was no test of like, oh, was it close or not? And I really, I was really trying to, she was able to, uh, I, I saw that, like I heard her with body shots, ended up uh, getting taken down, trying to finish her. Um, but uh, I really am determined to start finishing more fights. And I've just shifted that the way that I approach fights and the way that I approach training where I'm looking for a finish more often than I used to be, where before I, I was just trying to outclass class the person, put on a clinic, land the clean, but also make sure my shots count more than theirs. And in those in those last couple of fights, I I felt like I did that. And on the punch on the punch count, you know, where they score each round, I did that. I landed more volume on their face. I obviously did more damage, but still the judges saw it for someone else. So the only way to get past that, get past the fact that my punches don't look strong or my punches don't look like they're doing what they're doing, even though my hand is the only thing that hurts after a fight. Um, in order to get past that is to get closer to finishing fights. So I've just been changing the way uh, that I train, trying to get in more positions where I can hit them and they can't hit me back. And I think that's going to be the biggest uh, difference going forward when, when I'm fighting someone who would have given me a close punch for punch um if I put them in a position where they can't punch me back then there's no question in the judge's eyes if it gets that far you've always been excellent at uh, breaking down fights it's great to see you getting so much tv work nowadays I was wondering who your favorite analyst is uh who do you think is the best at breaking down fights man oh you're putting me on the spot um there's there's a few I have to say, I really enjoy when uh, people are going to give me shit, but is uh, breaking down fights because I feel like he does it in in a really fun way where you're intrigued by what he's saying, but he also throws a, a nice little segue in there, a nice little joke in there understand what he's trying to explain. And I think a lot of, um, a lot of times, analysts can be maybe too technical and it could go over like the casual fans head but I feel like Bisping has a great way of talking to both the casual fan and the uh, educated fighter so I, I really like listening to his breakdowns. I'm really interested to know what you think um, because uh, I saw Bisping on Twitter talking about the Simone Biles thing and as a fighter it's a very interesting concept right because you guys are under some of the most tough mental pressure all the time and mm, you know she yeah. came back to win the bronze which is an amazing story but i i was really intrigued to see fighters opinions of it because of the mental mm. pressure that you guys are under so did you have a take on that because i thought people are a little bit divided in how they feel about it um you felt people are a little what sorry i missed that I last time. sorry i think people were a little bit divided on on simone biles uh, deciding to opt mm. out initially yeah and, and then coming back but as particularly fighters i've seen have been quite vocal about it because you know you guys are under probably some of the biggest mental strain going in there and there must be days where you feel like you can't compete but you do yeah i think it's a little different for fighters i'm not going to say that what we do is less dangerous but um usually we're not in danger of getting like spiked on her head like that's actually illegal <laughs> so you're not supposed to do that so if you're having an off day like maybe you'll lose a fight maybe you'll get knocked out or submitted which is horrible but I feel like um gymnastics is really stupid dangerous like the fact that they're pretty much upside down the entire time and then they have to stick this crazy landing after spinning all over the place and if you're having I, I, I read a few like other gymnasts who were taking Simone Biles' side and it's like if you're having an off you know and uh, I think I, I don't think there was one person who cheered 
when Andrade jo- dropped Rose on her neck. You know, like everyone was like, oh my God, like, <laughs> like is she alive? So I feel like, um, I feel like Simone might have just prevented a tragedy from happening, you know, like, uh, like it's, it, she knew what, where she needed to be at in order to get through the day and not hurt herself. And the fact that she stepped out, uh, I think is, is very, um, is just very brave of her because she did know she would get criticized. She didn't know people would say, oh, you're taking spots from other people, but it's like, they're not, they're not really getting paid to be out there. You know, this is, it's, uh, it's the Olympics is, um, it's not a professional sport. Like you get paid for sponsors, you get a ton of exposure, you become a celebrity, but it's not a professional sport. So the fact that she was able to step away from that, I think that's very brave of her. And, um, you know, mental health is one thing that is just now being touched upon with with fighters as athletes. Um, And the more we focus on that, I think the more fighters will go into fights a lot healthier and perform better and have less horrible injuries because their mind was right and and they didn't step in um you know and with they didn't step in and and uh risk their physical health for because their mental health wasn't right so you you have to be focused when you do stuff like that especially something where there's a lot of gravity involved like I would I don't think I would ever be a gymnast (laughs) I could ever I could have ever been a gymnast because just flipping upside down I don't even I don't even like to do back bends. When I when I flip upside down, I'm like, oh god, <laughs> it's it's a scary thing. Do you think the MMA community would be receptive to that if if a fighter pulled out because their mental health wasn't right? I mean, the MMA community can be pretty pretty savage. Yeah, um, I remember uh, uh, that Max. Uh, I, I keep pronouncing his name wrong, but Max Rosharp. Uh, who was he just fought on cage warriors so I went back and watched his fight because I was commentating a lot of criticism because he was brought and um submitting everyone and they brought him into the UFC on like a week's notice and he fought a guy and he gassed himself out and between the second and third round he quit on the stool and uh, a lot of it was like the most recent time in history that anyone remembered that happening like it used to happen back in the day when no one was in shape but for a young kid to come in and just gas out it just seemed like a, a mental block it seemed like uh you know he he just let the pressure of losing get over overcome him and he didn't even try to win in the last But, uh, you know, like people can criticism, criticize him all they want, but if he's able to come back where he's in a more healthy state and win more, then who's to say that he did the wrong thing? Like he could have gotten horribly injured. He could have taken a lot of blows to the head that he didn't need to, but his toughness wouldn't have allowed him to tap out. Um, Who knows, you know? And uh, I think there's with like the, with, the studies on CTE that we see and the fact that it's so easy to uh, just become very depressed as a fighter or as anyone who's taken a lot of blows. So health is definitely something to, to uh, respect when someone says they're not feeling a certain way. Sometimes it's not about toughness. Sometimes it's like a chemical imbalance that if this guy just keeps doing it, then something might go horribly wrong. So I think I think the more educated human beings become on but just like mental illnesses and and that type of thing, then the more receptive will be to when someone quits. It's like being lazy or tired. Um, last one for me, then you've got, uh, it's always fascinating talking <laughs> to you, that, Angela. Right. It's super interesting talking to your, uh, getting your perspective <laughs> on, on, on all sorts of things. Um, you have two fighters from your division up for fighter of the year. Who's your female fighter of the year? Um, I don't know. Rose Nami Yunus. The fact that she was able to come back and um, and just knock out Whaley Zhang like that and it's not like Whaley seen. It was really impressive. 
um and a lot of people counted her out so i would i would have to say rose is my female of the year i can't think of anyone else who's impressive um this year so far so yeah i'll say rose awesome great shout uh i've got a message that you got you got another call to jump to as well so thank you so much it's a pleasure as always angela awesome cool, thank good luck you.